making your Broadway debut and everyone being like, what are you playing? And you're like, <laughs> fatty deposit. I just think, hun, you you're definitely wrong. Hi, how are you? I hope that you're very, very well. I did a video a couple of weeks ago talking about like Broadway scandals or dramas and people were really interested in it. I think it's very interesting to know like the backstory of things and why things happened. And I think rather than it being like tea, these are actual things that have happened with actual like sometimes legal stuff stuff, actual reports. I had quite a few comments like, oh, please will you talk about this person cheating on this person, and this person cheated on this person, and it's like, they're more personal things. This is more to do with like the business of Broadway, those kinds of things, which I think is really interesting and less in the kind of spilling tea, super dramery, and like something that, in all honesty, I don't know anything about, so it's not my place to talk about. In that video though, in the comments, lots of people told me about lots of things, and I have so many more videos to talk about this stuff. I think it's really interesting. I hope that people feel like maybe they learn something from this. I think it's very interesting and I hope that you do too. I hope you don't think I'm just like being bitchy or stirring drama and whatever because that is not what I am about. But I do think that like this is the kind of stuff I would like to see on YouTube. This is the kind of stuff I would watch. So that's the kind of content I want to make because I'm nosy and I like to know things. <laughs> there will be a few more parts to these videos. By the way, um, before before we get started, I am doing an Instagram giveaway on my Instagram for a t-shirt from the original production of Heathers. Here's a picture of it. It says, what's your damage? And on the back, it's got the original logo. I'm doing a giveaway. It closes on the 20th of February. So if you want to win that, and it's open worldwide, so head over if you're interested. But let's jump right into it. So the first thing that I'm going to be talking about today is to do with Hamilton. This week, it was announced that Hamilton Hamilton was going to be released in cinemas and it was the original Broadway cast performing in the show and then a lady called Betsy Struxness, I hope I'm saying her name right, Struxness? That's like quite a cool name. But anyway, a lady called Betsy who was in the original Broadway cast recording, she's the lady with the blonde hair in What I Did For Love, you know when they did the chorus line thing she like sang a lot in that, that's how I know her and she put this post on Instagram and in all of the promotions for this production it says with the original Broadway cast. Betsy put up a post of Lynn's tweet and said not original Broadway company because she was in the original Broadway company and she wasn't in the live recording of the production. So she isn't in it, so therefore it isn't an original Broadway company. My first instinct was, girl, get over yourself. Do you know what I mean? I always think, you were, <laughs> Eugene, <laughs> you were already in Hamilton. You're already living your best life. You're on Broadway, you know? That was my instinct. I was gonna just talk about this and be like, I think she needs to get over herself, blah, blah, blah. And then I went on her Instagram yesterday and she had written an article on The Ensemblist. I found it really interesting. There were some things that I disagreed with, some things I agreed with. She was talking more about just the treatment of ensembles and the way that often they're forgotten. And she was saying the way that ensemble performers have changed throughout the years. They used to just be dancers and things, but now they're set movers with Broadway cutting costs of things that used to be animatronic things that used to be made technical and now they have cast change in those things so it's like should I be paid as a performer and also a stagehand and she was talking about the way that ensemble and dancers in shows are often overlooked over the principal performers that's not right everyone is part of a company the show of Hamilton specific I saw it last week and you couldn't have Hamilton without the dancers they are an integral part of it I think everyone in the company in every show is incredibly important so understand stand her frustration. Something that did strike me, she was talking about the pay on Broadway and she was saying you know often we're not paid properly either and I thought it was really interesting because I had seen an article that said that the Broadway equity minimum for an ensemble member, so this isn't like a leading role, is $2,034 which roughly in UK pounds is £1,558 a week. A week! The UK equity minimum for a theatre that has more than 800 seats is roughly between 650 and 695 pounds. So on Broadway, they're getting more than double what UK casts are getting. And I think that that is a very interesting thing. Where is the line? 
I think it's very interesting if you compare Hamilton. So are you telling me that someone who is doing the same track in the same show on Broadway is earning more than two times the amount of a person playing that same exact dancer track on the West End? So I'm just editing this and I'm just saying I don't know 100% that either Betsy or the person who plays the role currently on the West End that she played that track that that is the wage that they are on but that is the minimum that they would be paid. Normally that's a pretty basic rate though for productions in the UK in the West End so I can't imagine it would be masses more but saying I don't exactly know. What's that about? I think that more people should talk about the difference in pay because New York is an incredibly expensive city to live in but so is London. I mean look at ticket prices for Hamilton they're very expensive. They can range up to like £250 I believe. Why are people not being paid the same to play the same role just in a different country? I think that's so interesting. Is that down to equity? Is it down to producers? I don't know. I found it fascinating. So I already think Hun, <laughs> be grateful for what you've got. Maybe that's just me. I'm always like, be grateful for what you've got. Anything else is a plus. They get their free physiotherapy and stuff, but she was saying the way that they're treated, you know, they don't always have the time to recoup after press events and things. They're in rehearsals, bringing in new performers, taking extra classes and things, which I get. I do not think that the job of a Broadway performer is easy. I don't know. The thing is that she brought up money and she was saying that a stagehand or somebody who works in the in the backstage crew would earn 22 times more than a Broadway performer. So she thinks 22 times 2,000. So she's saying <laughs> that originally a person who would have moved the set and things would have earned $44,000 a week. And when people bring up numbers like that, I just think, hun, you're definitely wrong. And that annoyed me. You know when someone's like trying to defend something and then they like start pulling out stupid facts that you think that's definitely not true that's where you lose me but I do still understand what she's saying and where she's coming from I understand her frustration she was an original Broadway cast member of Hamilton but when I think sometimes you have to look at the bigger picture as well the thing is that when they say original Broadway cast let's be honest let's call a spade a spade they're talking about the principal performers it's a shame it's wrong it's what sells if they say original cast excluding Bexy Struxness that doesn't make sense and if they just say a Broadway cast of Hamilton that could be any cast but obviously they want to sell that they've got Leslie and Lynn and Renee and why can't I think of anyone's names David and like the original cast you know what I mean that is what is selling it and I don't know I think sometimes you have to realize that it's bigger than you but at the same time literally in Hamilton he says if you stand for nothing but what will you fall for so I also think, yes, speak your truth. This is a great opportunity to get people talking about it. I'm talking about it right now. So I think it is very important that she's done this and I back her, but I also think you can't get too angry about it because in the grand scheme of things and when it comes to marketing, it's not personal, you know? Just my opinion. Something that I thought would be really interesting would be to talk in these videos about the shortest runs of Broadway musicals and why they finished so quickly and all the kind of drama surrounding those. So I tried to find the shortest one, which I think is Senator Joe, which closed after only three performances, which was three previews, it didn't even open. So the previews began on January the 6th, in 1989 and it closed on January the 8th after three previews in 1989 which is just heartbreaking apparently like financing for the show was just all over the place one of the producers Adela Holzer I think her name was tricked investors in fundraising tactics and people lost millions on it and apparently like the marquee outside didn't even properly promote the show it had like Kenny Loggins on Broadway he was not in the show and it it was a rock opera. I do think it's quite heartbreaking when any show closes. Apparently only 11% of the theatre was actually sold out for any of those three performances, which is just 
Oh, very sad. And then apparently Adela Holzer eventually went to jail for fraud for the tactics that we used to promote the show. I tried really hard to find information about this and something so interesting to me was on a Broadway World message board, someone who was in the original production commented about the show. So I'm gonna read it out what was said. I was in the show and things always seem different when you're inside of a production like this rather than looking from the outside. There were problems, not the least of which was a producer arrested for embezzlement, but it had an extraordinary cast. JP Doherty? Doherty? As Joe McCarthy, Rick Ryder as Roy Cohn, I don't know these people, were wonderful. The late Tom O'Horgan discovered me and was responsible for my subsequent career. After all these years, it still hurts that we did not open. And he said to somebody who said nice words, Wilmington, thank you very much for your kind words. I needed to see them at this time. Michael James Leslie. Isn't that heartbreaking? Somebody said, according to IBDB, there's a song called Joe's Liver and in the cast list are the characters of Enzyme and Fatty Deposit. I mean, come on. Can you imagine making your Broadway debut and everyone being like, what are you playing? And you're like, <laughs> Fatty Deposit. <laughs> Me though. Michael James Leslie went on to be in The Little Shop of Horrors on Broadway. He did Sweeney Todd off Broadway and the London production as Judge Turpin. This is very interesting. Oh, it's a treasure trove. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. And uh, so if I do another one of these videos, if you would like to hear about other shows that closed quickly and why, do let me know. I think it's so interesting. I love stuff like this. Honestly, I've had the best time researching this video. I find it so interesting. Um, now my next point is a bit of a tough one. I should probably give a trigger warning. This is to do with sexual assault. If that is gonna be triggering, then maybe this isn't the video for you. I just want to let you know. I had lots of comments in my last video. Please talk about James Barber. I personally had never heard of him. I'm not big into Phantom. I like Phantom. I think it's a great musical, but it's not one of my favorites. I like it, nothing wrong with it. it there's a lot of like operatic singing. It's called Phantom of the Opera. So it's not really my bag but I still think it's great. So anyway, I've never really been into the whole Phantom thing. I have friends who are hardcore Phantom fans. What I will say as well is I don't want this to become a witch hunt. I know that this video will probably get at least a few thousand views. I don't want you to see this and then go and attack this person and it would break my heart if you go and, you know, start attacking him. I'm doing this to spread awareness, to talk about it. I think it's interesting. It's a literal thing that happened, covered by the news. That's why I'm talking about it. This isn't a drama. This isn't like gossip. This is something that actually happened and this is my opinion on it, but I really, please, please, please have to say, please do not go and attack him on social media. Let this sink in, have your own thoughts, but don't go to the actual person and attack them. As with anything I ever talk about, I just have to say it, you know, you wanna be careful with what people are doing on the internet. So basically, this is talking about James Barber, who basically, when he was 34, he was in a production of Jane Eyre the Musical, which by the way, I used to listen to, I was in a production of Jane Eyre, I sang along to it at home, and it breaks my heart that this happened on that production. James Barber was in the show, and, and his drama teacher that he had when he was at school brought a student who was at the school at the time to go and see the show. She was invited backstage to James Barber's dressing room so that he could talk to her about the show. She was 15 at the time and she wanted to, you know, get information. She's a 15 year old, he's a Broadway actor. Do the math. And apparently he seduced her, then sexually assaulted her in his dressing room. Then afterwards, she, the drama teacher, James Barber and his girlfriend and the girl's parents all went out for dinner. And apparently while at dinner, he was still stroking her leg being inappropriate with a 15 year old when you're literally 20 years older than her. And then a few weeks later, he invited her to his apartment. He allegedly said to her, if you come over to my apartment, I'll introduce you to some Broadway producers. You know, we'll get started your career. She went along to his apartment and he again seduced her and performed sex acts on her and abused her. Five years later, she came forward when she was 20. She said what happened and she said that she wanted to press charges. So in his original statement, James Barber said, I only kissed her and touched her knees. Even so, if that's all you did, hon, that's not right. 
why? You shouldn't be kissing a 15 year old and touching her knees if you're 20 years older than her. He also said that apparently she lied about her age and said that she was 16, not 15. Even so, the legal age of consent in New York City is 17, so already that's crap. And secondly, even so, should you be doing that? When you are in a position of power, she is a fan or someone who is going to you as like a teacher, a mentor, that kind of vibe, you are breaking down a barrier. You are in a position of power flat out. And so that was in his original statement. Then when he was in court, he said that he did know that she was 15 and he said that under oath. So what do you believe? It's wrong anyway. Even if she lied about her age, there's a difference. Like, the thing that frustrates me is I was talking to somebody about this yesterday and they said, well, she lied about her age. How much can you lie about your age when you're 15? In person, when it really comes down to it, a 34 year old man playing the lead role on Broadway in a position of that power should and can tell the difference between an adult and not an adult and someone who isn't able to make that decision for themselves. So James Barber admitted to the allegations in court. Because he did that, he pled guilty, which meant that he was charged with a misdemeanor rather than a felony. So when you're charged with a misdemeanor, it means that he went to jail for 60 days, so two months, then he was on probation afterwards for three years. So in that three years, he had to say to anybody that he worked with, listen, this has happened, I was convicted of this, but that was it. He didn't have to go onto a sex offenders register, and then after those three years, he doesn't need to tell anybody he sexually assaulted a minor. Because he pled guilty, because he knew that if he went towards a judge, he would have been charged with a felony, and therefore he would have been on the sex offenders register, and he wouldn't have been able to work with children. But straight after he came out of jail, when he was still on probation, he went straight into a leading role on Broadway where he was nominated for awards and he won awards whilst being an abuser of a young girl. Apparently as well, there were two other girls who came forward and said that he had abused them. One was a 13 year old from California, a 13 year old. Because of some law in LA with regards to reporting a crime, it has to be within a certain amount of time because it had been over three years, then he wasn't able to be prosecuted on that. This clearly hasn't happened just once. I have to say I got the majority of this information from a New York Times article and also an article from Onstage Blog, which I will leave down below. It was really insightful, really, really interesting. It gave a lot of details about the trial. Apparently as well, while the trial was going on, James Barber's attorney was trying to get the victim's name printed in the papers to get other people to come forward and say that she had lied about other sexual assaults completely wrong. Painting her as a Lolita, which just makes me want to vomit. The use of that word is gross. Why are victims always blamed? I'm sorry. The beginning and end of it, he was an adult, she was a child. That's the end of it. I don't care if she lied about her age. I don't, I mean, she went on a school trip, so with a school teacher, so how much can she have lied? She's not going in saying, oh yeah, I'm 30, it's totally fine. Even if she lied about her age, it would be an additional two or three years at most. She went with her mum and dad. She you went with a school teacher, how much can she have lied? I think that when something has happened, you should be able to atone for those sins and I don't think that you should be held back forever for, for crimes that you've committed. I think that that's the reason why there is a justice system. You pay your justice and then you should be able to move on. However, I do not think that someone who abuses their power in a certain way should be allowed to go back into the same profession and the same situation and the same level of power that they were were in when they broke that trust. I don't think that he should be allowed to go back into that position. And and to be honest, I couldn't believe it when I saw he literally finished in jail and went straight back onto Broadway. On Broadway, there's a real thing about people being invited backstage. I don't think it's like as popular on the West End, but like everyone goes backstage and hangs out on the stage and goes for backstage tours after the show. It's like a very popular thing. I don't think that somebody who engaged in sexual activity with a minor. I mean, he blamed her originally, said that she was lying, said that, said that she lied about her age. He never said that it didn't happen. He said that she lied about her age and then said no. In court, under oath, he said, I knew that she was 15. He then took the path that would get him back to Broadway the very quickest. So after he was in Tale of Two Cities, which was the show that he opened straight after coming out of jail, he then didn't really do much and then he came back and was in Rocky Horror Picture Show. The news got out about what had happened and then he said that he was going to leave the show because his wife was having trouble with her pregnancy.
Then a couple of years ago, in 2017, James Barber was cast as the Phantom in Phantom of the Opera. News came out about, again, about what had happened, and the producers said, you know, we get it, but we're sticking with it. Legally, he is allowed to be cast, but I think there is a duty of care to the fans of shows and the audiences and people who are looking up to Broadway performers. There is a duty of care to them, and there is a safeguarding issue. Phantom has a really young fan base. There is a lot of young girls who really admire the Phantom, love the Phantom. I saw him be interviewed. And we have all of these schools that come who are seeing it for the first time and perhaps it's their first Broadway show. So it's kind of, it's very exciting. I know that you're not saying that meaning to be in a predatory way. You have previously been a predator and I just think there is a duty of care to those children who are being taken on backstage tours. Who's to say that this won't happen again? See, I'm sitting here thinking, God, maybe I'm being too harsh. Maybe, you know, why shouldn't he be able to to go on Broadway. He's worked his whole life to be on Broadway. And I get that, it's hard. When you've made it though, you don't ruin it by groping some 15 year old girl backstage. You didn't need to do that. You're the person who did that. No one else did that. You broke that trust. He used his status and power in the wrong way. When you break that, you shouldn't be allowed back in. I think, yes, he should be able to support his family, he should be able to make a living, but not in the same position that you were in when you abused that power. I'm sorry, it's just not right. It's just not right. Obviously, you know, he was on Broadway as the Phantom, he stayed in the show, it was obviously hugely successful. I was talking to somebody and they said, but he's so talented. That's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. If predators know I can abuse a minor and then take a quick plea deal and then I'll be straight back in that position again, then it's just gonna keep happening. And it's gonna make people think, well, what's the point in coming forward? Because it's just gonna put me through heartbreak. Because if you think about this girl, she has been torn apart. I tried to find as much out about this as I possibly could. And people were saying, oh, well, she graduated and then she couldn't get any roles. So she's like, oh, well, I'll ruin someone else's career. How have you even found that out? There's no need. Like, that's that's just wrong. People were like, why did it take her five years to come forward? Because sometimes 15 year old girls are abused by people in a position of power. You know, she might have thought, well, he must see me as older than I am. He must be respecting me or whatever. It takes time to come to terms with abuse that you've received and to then drag her through the mud because he's talented is just awful. And it shows victims, the thing is you might share something that was really heartbreaking to you and then you'll get verbally bashed in the newspapers and on social media and then that person Person will actually still go back to being in that position so that they can abuse again then what does that show people what does that show victims and what does that show predators I think this should be a teachable moment and we have a duty of care to people and therefore I don't think it's right that he should be in that position again oh it's just so wrong where is the line the thing is like if a teacher who was 20 years older than a 15 year old schoolgirl at school invited her to his house and sexually assaulted her, would you blame her or him? Would you let him do two months in jail and then go back to teaching at school again? Where is the line drawn? I would be so interested to know what people's thoughts are on this because on message boards, I saw a lot of support for him, which was a real surprise to me. And when I spoke to a couple of my friends who follow him on social media, I was like, do you, do you know about this? And they said, oh yeah, but she lied about her age. I'm baffled by it. I'm truly baffled. I would be really, really interested to know if people have more information. I tried my very best to get as much serious and proper hard evidence. I think the New York Times is a publication that obviously is very trusted and they're not into just sharing salacious gossip. So I hope that the information that I got from that is correct. Obviously that's the thing with the internet when you're not personally involved in a situation, you don't know. You have to look at the facts of the courts and real statements from him. I would be so interested to know what people think. Do people think that he should be allowed to be on Broadway? Do they think that he should be doing something else with his life? What What are people's opinions? I'd be so interested to know. It just, it broke my heart when I read all this yesterday. I had the kind of general gist of it and then yesterday I sat down to do some like final research, get the facts together. I was 
was like, bish, bash, bosh, we'll get it into the video. And then when I read all of the details of it, I was just heartbroken. I was heartbroken for that girl. I was heartbroken for every victim who's come forward and then been bashed by the defense's lawyer team and by people on message boards standing by someone who they like because they're talented or because they're whatever. I, I don't know. It's, it's very interesting to me. I didn't know that I would ever cover stuff like this on my channel, but yeah, here we are, I suppose. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it interesting. Do let me know if you would be interested in seeing other videos like this. I really, really hope that people don't go and attack this man or Betsy or the people behind, <laughs> what was that show called? I've already forgotten it. Senator Joe. I'm trying to do this to spread awareness and share information, but I'm not trying to start a witch hunt on anybody. But I would be interested to know what you think. Um, I guess I will see you soon. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're very, very well. I hope that you're having a good day, evening, week, morning, what? Whatever you're doing. I hope you're having a good time. I will see you soon. I love you very, very much. Bye!